Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great night, folks. Always do your best. Express your own divinity. You don't need the acceptance of others. You don't need knowledge or great philosophical concepts. You have the right to be you and express yourself, express your own divinity by being alive, loving yourself, and loving others. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading up 81, Nasdaq's up 205, S&P's up 33, gold contract down $11.30, trading at 17.16 an ounce. We have silver off five cents, eighteen dollars sixty-five cents an ounce. Lights we crude off two bucks, hundred and two dollars twenty-six cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. The ten-year note down six ticks, trading one seventeen twenty-five. The thirty-year is flat at one thirty-eight eighteen. And king dollar, king dollar is trading up three hundred and forty-one ticks at one hundred seven zero two three. The euro is one hundred one. The yen is at a one thirty-eight, and the British one thirty-seven point five zero. And the the British pound is at 119 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, it's going to be a kind of cool coming into tomorrow morning. So this is what we have out here. You have, well, first off, yesterday, folks, in the indices, let me bring the indices up first, because I want to show you, in the indices, we had the volume. So as we're coming off the low, you actually got the volume. Right here, 941 million versus that 897. And inside the uh, NYSE, we take a look at the composite, you're going to see the composite 5.2 billion versus 4.9. So bottom line is that you get a move and you get volume behind the move, which is always cool. Now, the S&P first is dealing with the swing. So what happened with the S&P, the swing on the S&P was 72 million and we did 78. So that also had it. Now, the swing, the major swing, however, is 393.16. Now, it looks to me like we're gonna close over that area today. Now, if we don't close over that area, we're gonna get divergence. Right now, bottom line, let's go, let's go bring up the futures here for a second, because what, what you had, you had markets running all day long. Google come out and said uh, that they're going to basically stop hiring for two weeks. That brought the markets into lower price. And what you had here is that even when this market was running, okay, uh, bottom line, you didn't have a huge amount of volume up here. That's the bottom line. You can see the first high that was generated at 47,000 contracts. Second high that was generated, it did 26. So it makes sense that it goes south, okay? Now all it did is came into strength. That's the bottom line, just came into strength. So that's a natural retracement, particularly when you take a look at this chart I'm looking at, you can see that the SPY went from, uh, well the S&P, the E-mini went from uh, 3836 up to uh, 3977, without stopping basically. Now, well, now overnight you had a kind of pullback. Okay, so, when you go back to the SPY, that number that we're gonna be watching in the SPY is gonna be crucial for tomorrow morning, and I'll show you why. So, inside of the SPY right now, we're at the 395, and it would have to pull back two points in order to basically have a failure. Now, let's go to the Qs, because the Qs are leading this market, the Qs have the volume behind it, the Qs want high up price, and after the market closed today, we're gonna go to, we'll go to Tesla, because Tesla's coming out with earnings, which, you know, bottom line, if they can pull um, earnings off, uh, it's going to be good for, for another, you know, 20, 30, 40 points inside the S&P. Okay, so, the Qs, the bottom line in the Qs, you had uh, 54 million, we're already at 52, the Qs are going to do it, they're, they're broken, the, lot, the consolidation that was in, that said the Qs want to go to 314. We go... Uh, here's the, it's going to be the dollar, man. It's a, this dollar is something else, man. There's no doubt about it. So if we take a look at the dollar, what you're going to see is that you're, you're, down, you're up 371 right now. You're at 107.05. And anything above 106.792 is saying the dollar can go higher. That's how this is shaking out, man, because it came into the highs of the strength and rejected it at this point. And what's going to be intriguing, of course, is that it's going to be tomorrow morning, I believe, that the ECB is going to come out and say, okay, are we going to go up on rates? 
Um, the, the intriguing thing about it is that when I look at this, right, it looks to me like the euro is going to go right back down to 99. And if that's the case, then what you're going to get is that whatever the ECB does, it's going to throw a wrench inside the dollar and pop the dollar again. So now let's get, let's get a little deviant here because the market loves being deviant. So picture the, the, um, the number comes out tomorrow morning. And because the NDX folks are so strong, you just want to pay attention to this because if we get a fast pullback, my take is that that's going to be a buy because of the fact that we know inside the NDX 100 right now that we have the volume. And it's really, it, 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 the trade would be a lot easier if the, the, if the spy actually failed because then it would be saying to me that, okay, you're going to get the pullback when that announcement comes. But guess what? <laughs> That's going to be a slight pullback, and you're just going to plow faster forward once again. Tesla. Let's go take a look at Tesla. Tesla's going to be coming out with numbers after the close out here. Um, let's see what we have here. So Tesla right now, the low for the year is 620. The high is 1243. They are going to be looking to put... Let's see what we have here. They're looking to do $16.9 billion, which is lower than the last quarter by $2 billion, and $1.83 to the bottom line. So their bottom line has got cut in half. If we take a look at the equity, uh, interesting, look at, you take a look at this equity, this equity is going to need a lot more volume coming into the close. Yep. So what you have here is this. You're coming into $33 million at $764. Oh, that's way too, well... Yeah, no, this is, this, is, this, uh, this is not even close, actually, volume-wise. So that's telling me that we're going to basically fail. Whatever Tesla's going to do here, um, this thing wants to back off. Because the, the volume is way too thin in order to basically get into the swing point and to sustain higher price. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow Industrials right now up 67. Nasdaq's up 194. S&P's up 30. We'll come right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading uh, up 89. You get the NASDAQ up 202. S&Ps are up 32. And let's go into the IWM for a couple of targets. Take a look at the IWM. So if we take a look at this uh, ETF structure, folks, uh, the low for the year is uh, <clears throat> 162. The high is 244. You're trading out at 181. Okay, so that had 25 million. Good. Okay, so this one actually took that swing out just about, ha almost had enough volume. So, yeah, that's saying that, hey, man, the next uh, 190s game, that's how this is set up. You know, it's, it's you know, you had all those gaps on the way down. Um, 18 million today. Yeah, you'll, st you'll still like 25 million tomorrow, which is not bad. So that's saying that that... Um, one on one nineties game. Let's go take a look at the UUP. This is the dollar index, folks. The ETF structure inside the dollar index. Uh, this is trading twenty eight sixty right now. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Okay, so this little baby here. The, the, the way that the UUP is set up would be saying, and that's what the question is: is you know, could that be a top? And yeah, looking at that. It definitely could be a top, you know. Um, that's how this is set up, you know. So the, the problem that I have inside of the currencies, folks, okay, now this has volume, okay, but the, the volume that the currencies actually do are so huge, <coughs> excuse me, that, you know, it, I'm not quite sure whether it's as accurate, uh, but the bottom line is that, that that is a setup for top, you know, so... We'll see how this baby shakes out. If we go uh, and take a look at some of the higher volume equities in this market out here today, you got Advanced Micros up three and a half dollars. You got Nvidia up eight dollars and sixty six cents. Uh, Coinbase, look at that. That caught a bid. <laughs> That's wild. Coinbase is up uh, ten dollars. That's fifteen percent, man. That's wild. Tesla's up nine dollars. Uh, you get Uber up one forty three. And uh, NVDA, we were talking about NVIDIA with a tiger yesterday. Uh, bottom line, this is getting some traction, man. You know, you can see they're coming into this big, man. You know, the bottom line, last three days, watch. On um, Monday, we did 67 million. Yesterday, it did 70 million. Today, it's going to be like 75, 80 million. So that swing point is game up there at that 196. It just blew away the swing point at 173. Uh, you know, that swing point only had 42 million. There's some heavy accumulation that's going on in here. Let me just pull this up for a second. I'm just curious. We'll see if we have any bigger owners that have done anything. If you're watching Tiger TV, I'm bringing up the security ownership, uh, basically, of larger owners. Come on, come on, come to daddy. Okay, I'm going to have to go back to that because that screen's frozen on me. If we do go over to the S&P, so check this out. The S&P right now, this is going to be intriguing because it has a small ABC structure up to go to the highs once again. Now, the real question is going to be, folks, is that if this goes to the highs too early, meaning it's a 322 right now, um, 
you know, I would rather this thing wait until quarter over something. Um, look at this. What's going on? Okay, one second. Let's do it this way. See if I can get a new one. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let me get rid of this one now. Okay. So, yeah, let me show you this S&P because this is going to be intriguing. If you get the, you can see, we pull this off. See that last, that, what, two bars ago? That took out that little bar. We had uh, 16,000 and like 10, 20 minutes ago, it was 33,000. Now that set that, it, you know, it, it's, well, actually, that's going against 52,000. It's going to be hard to break. But the number brings you to the high. So we'll see just how intense this baby is. So let's go take a look at Amazon. I believe Amazon's coming out with their numbers next week. Yeah, the 28th. So that's, uh, yeah, it's going to be next week. Uh, Amazon is going to be looking for... $119 billion and 16 cents. So... You know, what's intriguing here is that, you know, you can see, uh, bottom line, is that they get a lot of expenses that are built into this, man. You know, the market didn't like Amazon making 37 cents, and now they're going to cut that in half and do 16 cents when, in fact, they're going to take in $3 billion more dollars. Now, it changes the next quarter. The next quarter after that goes up to 35 cents again. Uh, bottom line is that then next year, you go from a price point of making 69 cents to two dollars and 58 cents so the it'll be a dramatic change there's no doubt about that uh what amazon is looking for netflix netflix came out with numbers last night uh bottom line is that you had netflix was uh well it got up to 216 prior to the open it was trading up 20 dollars. right now you're trading up 12 dollars and 87 cents we take a look at this it has some volume okay so if you look at netflix what you're going to see here see this 212, when you're looking at equities, folks, right, and you think that you're going to get a bounce, right, what you should do is go to the last day with volume on the way down. That's where they normally like to go. And you can see in Netflix's case, that was $212.51. And the first time you get up into that level, you know, you're not going to break it when you just got blown away when this thing came down from a price point of 351 the last time I come out with numbers and went to 212. That volume is too intense. What is happening here today is that this is coming into that supply line and starting to take some of that supply line out. So uh, Netflix, no doubt, is going to be something that you, you do want to keep your eye on. If we go take a look at the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX, you have um, let's see. Datadog. Datadog's up 9%. You got uh, uh, OKTA up 8.8%. Mercado Libre's up 77 There's some big numbers, man. Uh, Biogen, that's getting smoked. That's down uh, 6%. You have AstraZeneca down 35 I wonder why those, those drugs are getting done. Pinduoduo is down 2.4%. And you have uh, Palto Alto off... Uh, 1.7. Those are, those are big numbers, man. That's surprising. Inside the Dow Industrial. Strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. The leader out here looks like it's going to be Salesforce. Um, yeah, Salesforce is putting 61 positive points. Disney, 25. Home Depot, 22. Taken away from it. United Health. That's the big one. Minus uh, 83 points. You got Merck, minus 18. Big Mac, minus 15. Let's go over to Home Depot and see if uh, Home Depot is getting any traction out here. You know, Home Depot, bottom line, didn't pull back that much. Um, well, yes, it did. Yeah, sure it did. Let's see. Yeah, oh, sure it sure did, man. Okay, so Home Depot pulled back from 420, hit a low uh, four weeks ago of 264. There's no strength there, man. Nope. This is not done. Home Depot is going to be going down to 246. Yeah, you can look, look at this, man. You can see the contraction. The contraction of volume is pretty intense. You're going into 35 million. Last week we did 13 million. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Coming right back. Our phone number is 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Come right back. <laughs>